Hello and welcome everybody to today's Association for Manufacturing Excellence webinar titled Lean and Technology, Bring Accounts Receivable and Payable into the Future. I'm Tim Piotrowski, Marketing and Media Manager for AME, and I'll be your moderator today. Today's presenters are Paul Albano from Canon USA, Bruno Vandenveer from Canon Information and Imaging, and John Brandt and George Taninez from the MPI Group. Before we start, just a couple items. You'll be in listen-only mode throughout the webinar. If you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into your question area in the attendee panel and click on Submit. We'll review the questions at the end of today's presentation and answer as many as we can. When you log off today, please check your email inbox for a short webinar survey. Please take a few minutes to complete the survey as your feedback is important to us. We'll be, in, we'll be sending a copy of the presentation and a recorded link to each of you next week. Now I'm pleased to present Lean and Technology Bring Accounts Receivable and Payable into the Future. Take it away, gentlemen. Great. Thank you very much, Tim. And uh, welcome, everyone, to our uh, webinar today. Uh, my name is Paul Albano from uh, Canon USA. And um, I'm going to basically introduce the topic and then um, hand the session over to our uh, guest speakers. Um, before I begin that, you know, accounts uh, receivable and accounts payable processes are really the cash lifelines of an organization, yet uh, very little attention is paid to how these activities are managed, which can leave uh, inefficient, slow, um, and error-prone uh, workflows in place. Uh, in today's webinar, you're going to learn um, some real-world examples of how a lean approach to AR and AP processing can help standardize, automate, and improve the, uh, the process. So let me go over to the next slide. Uh, again, my name is uh, Paul Albano from, uh, from Canon USA. I'm responsible for our uh, vertical marketing team as well as uh, market intelligence and uh, analyst relations. Um, pleased to have uh, Mr. John Brandt uh, with us. John is the uh, CEO and founder of the MPI Group, uh, former publisher and ed editor-in-chief of Industry Week magazine. And he's got uh, more than two, two decades of, of, of experience uh, working with companies on how, the, how they can adapt and, and improve their, um, their, their new corporate structures, their new workflows, and, uh, and entering uh, new markets. And also joining us will be uh, Bruno uh, Vandeveer. Bruno is a, a senior specialist within Canon's uh, imaging, um, information and imaging solutions here at Canon USA. Um, he manages our business process automation solutions portfolio, and he's got um, extensive background in the field of, uh, of data capture and enterprise uh, mobility. Um, so just a very quick look at our um, at our agenda. So we're going to just basically um, I'm going to hand it over to uh, to John um, pretty quickly. Um, this is intended to be a very you know educational event. Um, we're going to talk about the current state of uh, legacy processes for accounts payable and accounts receivables, and then uh, John will talk about um, how a lean approach to AP and AR can standardize, automate, um, and improve the processes through uh, technology. We'll also talk about um, how to apply lean to AP and AR within your organization. And then uh, both John and uh, Bruno will talk about some best practices and provide some real life examples of uh, lean AP and AR uh, processing. And then um, if you have any questions during the event, you, you can certainly uh, type them in, but um, we'll open it up at the end with uh, you know, for some Q&A and, uh, and go from there. So um, at this point, uh, let me hand it over to John uh, Brandt. John? Paul, oh, thank you very much. And welcome, everybody, today. We're going to have some fun. We're going to talk a little bit about lean principles and technology, bringing accounts receivable and payable into the future. Let me just get this going here. You, you should have control, John. Just press. Uh, uh, quick. But, but, sure. Yeah. Great. So, what we want to do is talk a, a little bit about accounts payable, accounts receivable. We want to talk about taking um, control and. Is this moving here? There we go. About <clears throat> taking lean and taking lean principles that we have, we've used in production facilities, et cetera, and warehouses, and, and taking them into some of the back offices processes that re are really important, as Paul mentioned, are the life, uh, cash lifelines of a business. 
We do a lot of work in manufacturing. We do specifically a lot of work around continuous improvement, around lean principles, et cetera. And one of the things that is striking is how many manufacturers will use lean in a variety of areas, will even extend it out to their supply chain, but often forget about the back office and often forget about some of the processes that look pretty much like a production process, but aren't you, uh, they, they aren't using continuous improvement there. Um, what we find, and we've done some research in this area, is looking into accounts receivable, accounts payable processes, many financial processes within manufacturing firms, other firms as well, is many of them are still managed the same way they were decades ago. And what that means is that they are error prone, they're slow, they're inefficient, and literally are costing their organizations thousands, hundreds of thousands, depending on the size of the organization, maybe even millions of dollars a year. So. What do we mean by that? Well, let's talk about the current state of accounts receivable, accounts payable. You know, why does it need lean? Well, it needs lean in part because nobody has really in many ways looked at this at many firms for decades. Automation is extremely rare. And one of the things you find, as we know, as we automate uh, um, other processes, as we go to advanced software systems, ERP, et cetera, you know, what you want to do is make sure that you're capturing data consistently and in a consistent format. The problem with a lot of AR and AP processes is that they have multiple capture mechanisms. They may be using emails or faxes or web portals, or even we see an enormous amount of paper and manual processes still being used. The fact that you've got this huge panoply, this huge array of different ways of capturing data is just rife with uh, the opportunity to create errors. The other problem when you're getting data in all these formats, when it's not combined in any way, is that it is very rare for companies, to, and especially companies that aren't a massive scale, to have search capabilities. And that is really a problem when you're trying to pay a bill or you're trying to get a bill paid by a customer and you need documentation. Then you take all that, you take the fact that so many different departments touch AR and AP, specific departments of finance, et cetera, supply chain, et cetera. So many different systems, so many different departments are touching this, that digital integration is all but impossible because of the different formats. Um, I mentioned before, we see an enormous number of companies that still rely on paper invoices, paper purchase orders, et cetera. These are just slow moving and they are rife again with the opportunity for, for error. And because there's no search capability, because there are no automated alerts, traceability is often a very difficult problem, which again, leads to direct losses of cash. And let's talk about where that cash is actually lost. And it's lost in a bunch of places. It's lost, you've got delayed processing approvals. You've got a failure to take advantage of, of discounts. Maybe you've got a net 2% uh, opportunity to pay an invoice, you're not, you're not taking advantage of it. You've got late or missing customer payments. You've got erratic processing times. You've got multiple systems. There are manual to digital, digital manual handoffs, all kinds of time and waste in the process. Frankly, waste that everybody on this call who has done lean in any other format would not put up with in a production facility, in a warehouse, in a supply chain, and yet it is incredibly common within these financial practices. We see people having late payment penalties, even though they've got the cash sitting there. We see compliance problems. They're not complying to supplier terms because nobody's tracking the invoices. There are all kinds of security vulnerabilities. And this all goes together to drive customers and our vendor partners, our supply chain, crazy because they can't understand why we're not doing a better job, why we haven't taken a look at adding some of the practices we've used in other areas into our financial processes. And I want to stress this isn't a problem just for some companies or some manufacturers or some industries. It's, these are problems across the board. Great quote here from an Accenture study. Only 7% of chief financial officers believe that their finance processes consistently measure cost, productivity, and service quality and achieve their targets. 7%, that means 93% believe they've got errors there. And what the research says when we look at this, they're correct. So <clears throat> what would it mean then to take these legacy processes that frankly are costing all of us who have manufacturing companies or work with manufacturing companies are costing us money? What does it take to be lean? How do we do that? Well, let's go back to first principles. Same thing everybody on this call would do in any other area. Let's think, you know, sort of the three sort of core principles we would think about. You want to standardize. We want to figure out what are the current best practices in, in managing these? How do we apply it here? How do we establish a baseline benchmark results that this would be an acceptable defect rate, this would be an acceptable processing speed? Next, once we've standardized, just like you would in a factory, you're going to want to automate. 
how do we minimize our, re our redundancies? How do we speed our receivables? How do we precisely time our payables so we're getting the discounts we're entitled to and we're not paying penalties and we're not out of compliance? And then you would do the same thing as you would, again, in the factory, in a, in a warehouse. How do you continuously improve that process? How do, you, how do you satisfy your customers? How do you reward your customers? How do you make this not a cash flow drain, but a cash flow uh, opportunity for your firm? So what's the first thing we got to do? Well, the first thing we've got to do is obviously every firm is going to be a little bit different. That's one of the things we see. There's not just lack of standardization you know, across firms, but within firms. Um, you want to take a look at your processes, and you may have actually multiple processes being used by multiple people. You're going to have to take a look at, okay, what can we do? How can we use lean thinking? We want to make sure we can use lean thinking to, for efficiency. How do we design a better workflow? How do we get rid of some manual processes? How do we, how do we synchronize what, what we've got going on so we've got one common set of data that we're pulling together? We want to seek to figure out how we're getting that data. We want to figure out once we do that, how do we make everything go faster? How can we enhance speed? How can we enhance our search capabilities, our traceability, our visibility into our ARAP processes? Because if we can't see into there, we can't see trends, we can't figure out how we can make it better. Most importantly, most importantly, and this is what happens at a lot of firms, there is no focus on the quote unquote customer of accounts receivable and accounts payable processes. And those customers are your customers and your suppliers. And how would we make them happier and how would we work with them better and be a better partner so that instead of just doing some sort of buy and sell relationship with me, something just transactional, we are actually working with them in a way that shows we are responsive, shows we are agile, shows that we are giving them visibility into the processes so that they know when they're being paid, they know when we, we need to be paid, and discounts are being taken on both sides appropriately. How do we do that? So. What you have to do is once you've started to do that analysis, you have to have a vision. You have to start talking about that. And, you know, what would a world-class ARAP process be here? What would the goals be there? How can we communicate that to all the different departments that interact with this? Because there are so many different departments that touch these, these processes across an organization, which means that to do this well, and when you see it done well, you almost always see a cross-functional team that gets assembled that includes not just people in finance, but lean experts, people in individual departments where there's a, there, lots of invoices are being processed or where there's lots of issues. And that's what you've got to do to get this done. Once you've done sort of that overall idea and we know that what we're looking for, then the same as you would for any other lean process, we're going to want to do value stream mapping. We're going to go in and see, okay, what have we got? You're going to go to the Gemba. You want to visit every single site or location where an accounts receivable or an accounts payable process occurs, and you're going to want to physically walk through that process. And you're going to want to observe, okay, what happens here? Let's just not, let's not talk about where we want to be. Where are we at right now? Record what it goes on. How long does this sit on this desk? How long does it take to get over here if it's a paper thing? If it's electronic, how is it processed? Record that time required for each step. And then what you're going to want to do then is then also while you're doing that, say, oh, that's odd. How come this department does it this way? This other department does it this way. Typically what you will see when somebody starts mapping a financial process, especially an accounts payable or accounts receivable process, you will see lots of, you could call it inconsistent, you could call it rogue, you could call it whatever you want, but there's not a lot of standardization. Everybody's doing it differently. And that is a problem. And the reason you want to look for that is that, A, you want to find the problems that are killing value in the, and, and wasting time here, but you also may find somebody who has really figured out a great way to do that, and that would be something that you would want to replicate in your future state. You've got all these times. You've got the inconsistencies. What you want to do then is take a look and figure out, okay, which of these are waste and which of these are creating value? You know, an invoice sitting on a desk, that's clearly waste, you know? Uh, value added time, you're verifying that uh, that this uh, a shipment was actually received and that you should pay for the goods. That's not wasted time. And then once you've got all that, once you've done that mapping, just as you would for any other lean process, what you're going to do is try to figure out, okay, where we've got these problems, where these issues have surfaced, what are the root causes? Keep asking why until you get to the root cause there. Why, why, why? And <clears throat> some of the things that we typically see people looking at in this when they're mapping this out is they want to take a look at how do we receive uh, documents? 
How do we receive invoices from our suppliers? What are the different methods? Is there a way to standardize that? What is our method of sending invoices to customers? What kind of sign-offs are we currently requiring across the process for both AR and AP? Um, when you've got people who are responsible, why are they responsible? What is their level of authorization? How do they sign? Are they do, is it a manual signature? Is it digital? Can just an email say, yeah, that's okay? And then you want to know is how you're monitoring these processes for accuracy, speed, efficiency, and compliance. I will tell you that most of the time when somebody goes through this process, they find out that there's not a ton of monitoring going on on how well the process itself is working, which is, of course, one of the reasons it's not working well. As Peter Drucker said many, many years ago, what gets measured gets managed, what gets managed gets better. And that is not happening with most of these processes. <clears throat> so if you were to go in and say, okay, you're going to look at your own accounts receivable process, what are the likely things that you might find if you haven't done this before? Well. There's a whole bunch of issues you might find. You might find that your sales to new customers aren't recorded on a standardized invoice. You might see that your accounts receivable transactions are in some kind of an invoice queue. You might find out that uh, you've got manual fact finding. People are, you know, they don't have all the sales information for an invoice or to back it up. So they're actually digging for it. Or you might find out that people didn't dig deeply enough because it, it wasn't automated. So you're billing on the wrong contract. You might find out that you, uh, you've got a shipment or receipt of goods is not confirmed, so you don't know if you should be billing or not. You've got payments that aren't re reconciled promptly. You've got payments that are received, but are, uh, are, I'm sorry, you've got payments that aren't received from customers, but you don't know it until you've got whatever periodic process for your AR. A lot of places it's 30 days, 40 days, so you can have somebody where an invoice is aging well out of date before anybody notices it. Or you may even find that you've got payments, um, physical checks that aren't actually being promptly deposited, and you're losing money on those every time. These are things that you typically see in a legacy uh, AR process, and there are corresponding problems on the other side uh, in terms of accounts, re uh, accounts payable. You know, you got an invoice receipt here, but you didn't actually get the shipment, and you may not know that because two people aren't talking within your firm or two departments aren't talking. You've got invoices sitting in an approval crew, you, uh, queue. You've got um, workflow delays that are that are causing late payment. You've got early payments that are made, but you're not getting you're not taking your discounts on them. Maybe the payments not being recorded correctly. You've got payments that aren't actually being aggregated, so you could get some volume discounts. There are an enormous number of problems here, and these are these are just a few of the typical ones. So you're working on this. You're going to make it lean. You've mapped it out, you know what you're looking for, you've found a bunch of the problems, what do you do once you've got that map? <clears throat> well, again, like any other lean process you're gonna do throughout your, your company. First things first, if something's killing you right now, fix it. Fix the obvious problems immediately where you can. For specifically these processes, what you wanna do is figure out how can we streamline, how can we automate uh, content uh, acquisition, data acquisition, maybe we can automate imaging or routing approval to eliminate any manual handling. And in, in general, you want to get rid of manual handling to the extent that you can, um, because it's going to speed things, lower costs. You want to figure out how can we automate our routing processes and our workflows. You know, when you're relying on somebody to, to, to batch, to do batching out of a, a series of invoices, et cetera, or, or a, a series of payments, if that person is unavailable, all of a sudden you've got a breakdown in the system. There ought to be multiple redundancies and there ought to be automation where there are automated alerts. You want to make sure that you have established standardized data formats that allow you to share documents across the organization and allow you a searchable capability. And you want to make sure that when you automate these processes, they've got uh, fail-safe mechanisms in them using whether, whether it's optical character recognition to verify prices and quantities, digital conversion technologies. You want to make sure you've got stuff built into these processes that are getting rid of the errors that the manual processes typically put into them. And the great news about this is that this doesn't have to take a long time and it doesn't have to cost an enormous amount of money. There's a great example here. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a healthcare provider um, was took a uh, serious look at their accounts receivable pro uh, issues and they decided that they wanted to work with a, a, uh, a lean provider to figure out could we increase the value of the claims we process every month and can we increase the number of claims that we process. 
and they went with a fairly standard approach. It's going to be familiar to everybody on this call in other areas. They made, uh, did a cross-functional team that got trained on lean principles and DMAIC, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. They went out, and as I've suggested here, they mapped their accounts receivable process, and they identified the number of returned claim forms that they got from insurance companies as waste, you know, and rejected because it wasn't complete. They then did a, a Pareto analysis, 80-20 analysis on the reasons for these returns and took a look at all the activities, value added and non-value added. And they got some pretty significant results. They identified some solutions. They trained everybody on the finance team. They did a standard checklist to review every completed form, schedule of activities in the process. They standardized their complaint, their, I'm sorry, they standardized their claim form codes and had a standard location for claims form status. Again, a lot of really simple stuff. They were able to increase their cash flow from claims by 45% monthly. They were able to increase the number of claims they processed by 54% monthly. Not only that, they ended up with a team that had more skills in finance and was happier because they're actually creating value instead of creating problems. So how did they do this? Well, what do you have to do is we talked already about mapping the future state and what is your ideal uh, workflow. So what are the things you'd want to focus on here? You would want to take a look at your specific uh, AR and AP processes, but typically what we would see people doing is looking for some key performance indicators, some benchmarks, to, and they might look at, you know, we want to have reduced processing times. We want to have fewer errors, optimum payments, optimum receivables. We want to improve productivity. We want to increase our collectibles rate. Whatever mix of factors that you would look at there would, I mean, would obviously be organization specific and specific to the issues that your organization is dealing with. But these are the types of things that people can rally around and that can give you a real guiding light for what the future state should be. <clears throat> a great example of this in accounts receivable, a company called Geiger. They're a family owned distributor of promotional products. They got 500 employees. They got about 50,000 customers around the world. They worked with a consultant to figure out how could we apply lean principles across all divisions, including their accounts receivable. And what they wanted to do was take a look at are there specific problems. And what I love here is that they found a very specific problem. <clears throat> they looked at their accounts receivable past due notification process. And they thought it could be standardized, but what they found out was that their current state uh, process was that after 30 days, they would send a letter to customers and say, hey, pay up. And what they found was that it was completely ineffective and customers hated it. And they found out when they started analyzing the data and why people actually paid, that it turned out really people only paid, they were happy to pay, but they paid after they got a phone call at 45 days. The problem is, so they've got a process with phone calls that actually works, they're not doing it, they're doing the letter process that irritates people, and the letter process is taking two hours a day and costing them almost $30,000 a year. All right, so obvious problem, what do you do if you're gonna do a lean solution there? What you want to do is you're going to figure out, all right, how do we get rid of this? Well, let's just get rid of the letter process and focus on phone calls. Guess what? Let's take the thing that's not working and get rid of it. Let's do the thing, take the thing that does work and do more of it. And let's do it sooner and faster. Let's start those calls at 35 days instead of 45 days. They laid all this out on an A3 document, presented to Lean Steering Committee, and implemented it. Tremendous results. Again, this is not... This is not lean rocket science right here, but this is real money that goes to the bottom line. So when you're talking about an AR future state, what do you want to do? Well, you want to make sure your goods and services are being uh, delivered to your customer exactly what you want. You want that delivery to automatically trigger an invoice. You want the customer database to automatically be updated with uh, any recent information from that invoice. You want alerts that are going to warn you to exceptions. You want to have standardized policies to manage them. You want to make sure your customer payments are automatically reconciled and recorded, and you want to have some sort of tracking mechanism that gives you a continuous AR number so that you know exactly where you are at all times. You're not waiting for 30 days or 45 days, and that can automatically remind customers, hey, uh, maybe you forgot about that invoice. Can you help us out here? Similar for uh, accounts payable, what, what, what would you want to focus on? Well, you want to make sure that you're getting your goods and services that are received exactly when you need them, just in time, with no delays due to the fact that maybe your process was bad and you didn't pay for them. You want to make sure that any vari variations in specifications are identified promptly and corrected. 
You want to get your invoices electronically. Nobody needs a, a, a physical invoice. You want to make sure that you've got a system that will verify the invoice, the amounts, delivery, etc. You want to make sure that these are automatically routed, not waiting for somebody to get authorized. You want alerts to warn you of approval delays, and you want payments made exactly as contracted. Not a day sooner, unless, of course, a day sooner is going to get you a discount. Great example of this, Jacobs Vehicle Systems, people who uh, invented the Jake Brake back in the day, um, they wanted to make some changes in their accounts payable process, uh, division of Danaher, and they looked at this accounts payable and they thought they found that their productivity they thought was extremely low. People, it was being processed eight vouchers, a little over eight vouchers an hour per person with a first pass defect rate of 65%, almost two thirds were incorrect. Why? Why would that be? Well, mainly because they were missing purchase orders or incorrect units of measures were specified on the purchase order versus the invoice. And then, so again, doing the doing the why, why, why process, getting to the root cause, why so many of these are missing purchase orders? Well, it turns out that the majority of the invoices missing these were from the engineering department and 80% of them for less than 100 bucks which means that they were spending an enormous amount of time product and, and potential productivity on managing a really small amount of money. This is typical in a financial process that goes wrong and you're ending up, you know, if you did a Pareto analysis on that, you'd, 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 you'd practically just want to uh, stick your, bang your head against the wall. So how do you fix this? Well, they worked with a, a consultant. Uh, they put together a cross-functional Kaizen team and they first needed to stabilize the process because what they found is they only had three clerks, but they were all doing things differently. Um, they then analyzed, mapped, and figured out what was value added, what was not. Got rid of uh, sorting of mail as non-value added. They got rid of the need for duplicate entry. Um, they decided that an electronic copy was, was sufficient. Um, they figured out how to uh, fix the exceptions program by coming up with a new special purchase order system for anything under 100 bucks. It was a very simple form filled out, sent to accounting with the special purchase order number required on all submitted invoices. If it didn't have it, it went right back to the department. You know, not a defect here, a defect there. And they addressed the fact that they had so many invoices and, and vouchers with wrong units of measure that they established at last a master list of orders of uh, units of measure. And the results were pretty dramatic. They did this in a 60 day period. After 60 days, they had increased productivity so much by 261%, improved quality by 92%, that two of the clerks were assigned to different roles altogether, and the remaining clerk not only did AP, but also had AR assigned to that person. Um, they, reduced the, uh, they reduced the missing POs by 80%. They almost eliminated duplicate payments. Again, this is not rocket science level lean. This is just taking lean and looking at a process that is really killing productivity and frankly killing the cash cycle at many firms. So how do you do that? How do you bridge where you're at with where you go? Well, to close that gap, you've just got to do sort of your the, what you would do for any other process. You're going to apply 5S. You're going to sort, sort, set, and order, shine, standardize, and sustain. Try to get one piece flow whenever possible. Try to avoid any batching or queuing. Um, if this sounds a lot like your production system, it, that's because it is. You're going to do pull wherever flow is not possible, making sure that downstream activities are triggering uh, work from upstream activities. You want to level the schedule, and you want to plan, do, check, and act. Make sure that you are continuously working on this process, trying new things. When it works, replicate it elsewhere. When it doesn't work, fix it and try the next thing. Where you see this work is, you saw, I just, there was just did two or three examples there for you. Every one of those, there was a detailed action plan. They came up with a plan, they I did the mapping, they figured out, okay, this is what we're gonna change. A lot of time spent on communicating, a lot of time being very clear on assigning responsibilities for those changes, and most importantly, establishing processes, both rigorous and measured and informal, like a huddle, to routinely measure what's going on, how we're succeeding, and what we need to do next. Then they implement and assess these changes. Does it work? If it didn't work, why not? Uh, what can we do? If it did work, how can we do more of it? Once the process is stabilized and you're able to test that, there are some things you can do with new processes, new technologies, whether it's content management, scanning, et cetera, improving the, the security of systems that can really make a difference and, and put a sort of a turbocharge on these activities. So, 
that's what you're going to do. What kind of results should you be looking for? Well, what you really want to do here is you're trying to make your company leaner and make sure you've got something that is probably irritating in some way, customers and suppliers. Take it from that to something that is adding to the value you provide for people. You know, and if you do this in the right way, these processes are going to, just as they did for the examples I cited, they're going to minimize your overtime, they're going to reduce labor costs, they're going to improve productivity, they're going to improve speed, they're going to improve the way that you do this. They're going to also uh, allow you to do things like you're going to be able to get the discounts you've been missing. You're going to be able to catch fraud much easier. You're going to be able to improve supplier relationships, identify and collect missing receivables. And again, you're going to be able to um, negotiate better contracts because you're going to know what you're spending where and how to leverage that in the way that you work with your supply chain. So okay, with great. that, I'm going to turn it back over to Paul and to Bruno, and, uh, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of money here. You guys ought to go get it. That's great, Sean. Thank you so much. That information you provided was uh, was really excellent. As you mentioned, there's a lot of money out there that can be saved just by applying a few simple uh, lean principles to AP and AR. And, uh, you know, as the old saying goes, a penny saved is a penny earned, right? So um, I'm going to transfer this over now to uh, Bruno Vanderveer with our um, Canon Information and Imaging Solutions Group. He'll provide us some, um, some more real-life examples of uh, lean AR and AP processing and, and how technology can be applied to improve the process. Thank you, thank you, Paul, and thank you, uh, thank you, John. Uh, maybe first, I want to illustrate a little bit the process that we we're going through when receiving an invoice into the firm, right? So they they are, they are kind of the uh, the cycles. Uh, the invoice goes through with intelligent invoice capture, and I'll provide some more details on that and how they can help with the principle that John uh, clearly uh, uh, established or presented, uh, the validation of the data after the capture, the integration with the ERP system, typically with the ERP system, which is another important aspect, uh, the approval and workflow management, and uh, of course, the, the payment ultimately of the invoice. On the right side, you've got a similar process for the AR where an order comes in into the firm, is captured uh, and validated similarly, ultimately creates uh, an order in the ERP system, but in many cases also has to go through workflow, right? Uh, as an example, uh, you may have a process of order acknowledgement in some industries. You may have an order that is invalid or doesn't, you know, where the pricing is not uh, uh, is not matching contract. In those cases, you may want to have a process to uh, to implement uh, these these workflow and to be able to go back to your customers with the right uh, response in a in a timely manner. As you notice, some of the steps are common between the two processes, such as the automated data capture, the validation. Uh, ERP integration and workflow, but of course within the firm as, as we understand these are kind of uh, uh, separated uh, process. Uh, in one of the steps that is common is the uh, document capture and you could say that at a high level what the automation does in this process is transform either an invoice or a sales order into an ERP transaction, essentially. And that's kind of the standardization that happens, and we'll cover that into a uh, little bit more detail, but certainly the idea that invoice, for example, are processed the same way regardless of the channel they come through is certainly very important and aligned with these lean, lean principles of essentially consistency and standardization. Uh, in fact, uh, you, could, you can argue that the digi digitization of the information that comes in on paper already provides a very significant opportunity to increase visibility and to eliminate waste. And I think uh, John illustrated that in one of his examples, but it, it's actually a common thing that uh, uh, invoices, POs coming onto paper already create a kind of a drag on how to handle them, right? Uh, part of the an automation solution of, includes the intelligent um, capture and verification and processing of the information. And uh, one of the key there, as I mentioned, is that the information is processed 
regardless of the way it comes into the firm, whether it's by mail, email, or even electronically, the system is essentially going to digitize the information and process it uh, the same way and feed it to the system. The typical solution actually extracts information from PDFs sent uh, as email attachment. It eliminates one of the very common source of waste in uh, AP or AR process where a document is received electronically but then printed to be either typed from the document itself or even fed to, uh, to a scanner. If you, if you think about it, you already add a lot of waste there because you created another piece of paper, but you also wasted uh, the quality of the information. Indeed, when you receive an invoice in a PDF form, for example, the quality of the information you get, and I'm not talking about image quality, I'm talking about the quality of the information that can be extracted from that electronic document is far superior to what you could ever get from someone looking at the document because there is a text layer in a PDF that can be automatically extracted from our, our system and that creates quality in the information you create in your uh, a management system in your ERP system. So this is a very unnecessary step that can be easily eliminated with automation. In the verify stage, the extraction of the information can be verified and if necessary corrected uh, to ensure that the quality of the information in the ERP, which is the, the typical system of record for the enterprise, uh, is as high as possible. And so in that sense, you could say that automation actually contributes greatly to the quality of the information. And, and uh, another aspect of this integration, of course, is the fact that the extraction itself is helped by the ERP master data. In fact, the extraction is validated against the master data in your system to increase the uh, accuracy level again. Another very important consideration, and especially if you think about continuous improvement, uh, is the ability to have uh, visibility of the performance of your system. And this is typically achieved by providing reports and dashboard uh, that can actually show you when a problem occurs. And actually, in some cases, have the ability to actually prevent problems from, from happening. Uh, if you think about fraud detection, for example, uh, uh, can can actually be be uh, implemented using this type of of method and provided visibility. Uh, another example of a defect in in an AP uh, system and a defect that is actually very common in most firms is the duplicate payment. That's very typical of a defect that is relatively difficult to tackle in a large firm in a manual system, but is relatively easy to dramatically improve upon once you have the automation uh, that can help you to prevent uh, these duplicate, uh, dupli duplicate payments. All this um, leads to uh, cycle times that are uh, better measured, increasing the speed of the processing both for the orders coming into the firm as well as for the invoices uh, received from vendor, uh, and also the visibility of performance. And here we just have a few, uh, an example of a few quality uh, indicators that are very uh, commonly used, such as the number of invoices processed in a, in a time period, the average time it takes to process the invoice, Etc. 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 And so all these quality indicators can be used to uh, spot the exception to and to continuously improve on the performance of your system. So here I'm going to illustrate a little bit the benefits that are derived by the application of lean and, and automation into a firm. And the, the metrics that I'm sharing here actually uh, are from uh, Canon USA, where we did implement uh, an automation system. And uh, 
if you you want to measure the uh, speed increase that resulted, and by the way, this was uh, an AP solution, but it was also a procurement solution. So it was a little bit more than purely the problem of uh, processing an invoice coming in. It also had to do with the procurement of most of the item. And in that way, we were able to measure the uh, project approval that went down uh, to five days when after automation, where it was 11 days to get the uh, project approval. And more interestingly, and maybe more relevant to the AP discussion, is the requisition to invoice, which was uh, before eight days and after five days. And that's quite incredible. And, and of course, uh, it, it does require supplier collaboration to get to this stage where eight days, uh, uh, coming down from eight days to five days for requisition to invoice. And these, these may include very um, commonly used and repeat order uh, type of item. In terms of utilization of resource, which is another uh, concept of lean, of course, the number of invoice processed by one AP resource was of the order of 10,000 invoice per year, and it went up to 27,000 invoice per year after automation. So that's a, essentially a three, three x, nearly 3x uh, improvement in the utilization of the resource. Uh, that uh, um, uh, and, and that was largely due to the uh, reduction of the processing required uh, to get the invoice process. Um, other aspect is the control over cash, right, uh, in terms of on-time payment and ability to capture uh, supplier discounts for early payments. Uh, what, what we measured in our, in our system is that uh, until we implemented, we were only, only able to capture 9% of the offered uh, supplier discount for early payment. And after implementation, that number went up to 30% of these early payment uh, capture. So these are just uh, a few metrics, again, uh, that we've measured at Canon internally when we adopted our uh, AP automation uh, solution. Another um, example maybe I want to share is of a, a customer of ours in the manufacturing sector uh, that um, has roughly $750 million in, in revenue that is in a high growth mode. And they actually identified that the uh, tools um, were really not supportive of the organization um, growth. And they started looking for a document management solution that would not only reduce the number of paper, help them with record retention, but also support the uh, regulatory requirement because they happen to be in a highly uh, regulated industries. Uh, the organization recognized that providing the right tool, such as uh, intelligent invoice capture and analytics to the financial staff, would ultimately provide um, additional uh, return in support of the upper management requirement to make decisions on accurate and timely data. Um, in addition, this client also chose to implement the solution to support a second paper intensive process in customer service. So these were kind of the challenge that they were faced with uh, when, when uh, they embarked on the uh, AP automation project. The solution that they implemented actually covered more than AP. It, it, it did cover AP and sales order as well. Uh, and it gave them an improved visibility into the business, gave them the control they needed over the process and the ability to uh, reduce the processing cost. And a business benefit was the ability to accurate uh, for accu accuracy and timeliness in the financial reporting. Um, they also found that the digitization of the paper document for the customer service team would also uh, provide them uh, incremental uh, benefit in customer satisfaction. So this is what, uh, what this um, uh, chemical manufacturer did with the AP solution. Another uh, case study that we have is from a, a very large global sourcing and logistics company. 
uh, that was really faced with the difficulty of processing uh, multilingual, multi-currency invoices for material, freight, tax, and custom charges. Uh, and it was really problematic for them to invoice, to, to process these invoices, in particular uh, the, the multi-page involved invoice and the fact that because of the nature of their business, uh, a large portion of the invoice were not uh, following a PO, essentially. They were just uh, invoicing for goods delivered. Uh, they were operating in multiple time zones, which also made their uh, operating requirement much more uh, com 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 complex. The solution that they implemented uh, was able to handle the, the variety of uh, formats in terms of languages and currencies of their invoice. They essentially implement a simple receive, scan, extract, verify process, very much like the one I illustrated in the beginning of my presentation. They also had a content repository and configurable workflow with uh, actually dynamic approval rules and escalation that allow them to uh, alleviate the problem when one uh, necessary approver is out, out of the office. So in, in summary, the benefit that they derive was really an improved of their operation, dramatically reduced cycle time in a standardized process. And um, we, we've seen that as well at, at Canon, uh, dramatically improve supplier uh, relation with a reduced number of suppliers. Once you start to measure this process, you can actually um, uh, combine and rationalize your, your, your suppliers and agree with them that you're going to give a more business to a limited number of suppliers that are uh, uh, better suited to actually fulfill your need, and it helps the supplier, but it also helps you by reducing the number of uh, partners that you involved with. Of course, the uh, visibility for the timely decision was another uh, important factor, and the ability to uh, comply in terms of the expense control, but also of the fraud pre prevention um, mechanism, given the, the distributed nature of their business. So these are just two, two examples, actually three if we count uh, the CUSA numbers, uh, the Canon USA numbers that I uh, gave you. Uh, and, but as a conclusion, I think we, we can say that the automation can, can actually help you improve your process and applying the lean principle to AP and AR uh, automation can be uh, highly beneficial in the enterprise. We are now going to uh, take questions, and I believe the best way to uh, ask questions is to enter them in the chat box, Paul. Yes. Uh, so, so thank you, Bruno. That was uh, really great information there. Um, before I hand it back to Tim, actually, for the uh, for the Q and A, I just wanted to let the folks here know that uh, Canon will be participating at the upcoming uh, AME uh, conference, which is taking place in uh, San Diego from October 29th through uh, November 1st. And uh, we're going to be showcasing really all of our solutions from the front office uh, to the factory floor, to the factory floor, um, which can help manufacturers build a faster, more efficient, secure flow of information through various technology and solutions across our entire portfolio. We'll be showing solutions for protecting uh, intellectual uh, property, so um, authenticating users, um, act, uh, controlling access to MFPs, and implementing things like secure printing and secure scanning to keep uh, confidential information um, secure, um, solutions to improve workflow efficiency. So um, one of the processes that we've um, helped um, find a solution for was the whole product warranty claims and registration processing. We'll be showing some solutions for that. We're also going to be showing some of the solutions that um, Bruno spoke about uh, to help automate the um, AP AR accounting uh, processing to eliminate manual handling and uh, redundant uh, capturing efforts. Then we're going to showcase um, some of our new assisted um, defect recognition technology, which is leveraging AI-based technology to intelligently analyze uh, parts and detect uh, defects uh, much more uh, accurately and efficiently. So we've got a very, um, very excited about the upcoming conference. We hope to uh, to see you there um, at the end of October. So at, at this point, I think I'll hand it back to um, back to Tim. I want to thank uh, all of you for uh, for sticking on the call and um, uh, please, you know, submit your questions.
Yeah, thank you, Paul. And uh, now we'll review some of the questions that are coming in. If you do have any questions, please submit them on the right side of your screen. And uh, first question I see up here is, uh, what is the most common problem you see with AP and AR processes? Uh, I'll take, this is John Brandt. Can I, can I take that one? I'll take that. Um, I, most common, I, I think what I would say is it's probably batching or queuing. You know, and and it's not something that's just common with accounts payable or accounts receivable. It's kind of pr pretty common with any business process, whether it's manufacturing, services, finance, healthcare, you name it. Batching, you know, waiting, saving stuff up to do it all at once. It's sort of the opposite of the lean objective, which is one piece flow. And batching always results in delays. You know, except for the you know the last piece of the batch, I guess. Um, and it creates delays that just keep accumulating all the way downstream. It also it also delays in this in this particular instance it delays the time it takes to catch any kind of errors you know things like underpayment or overbilling so it's a it's a big issue in uh, it's a big issue in cash flow. All right, uh, one other question coming in: uh, Do your uh, um, does your solution for automated AR and AP use standard work? If so, how many steps are indicated for an AR process, for example? That sounds like a Bruno question. I, I didn't get the question. Stand out. Yeah, do you, um, your solutions uh, do, for automated AR and AP, does that use standard work? And um, how many steps would be involved in the process? Okay. Yeah. So I, yeah, in my presentation, I indicated a little bit what what the process are. But yes, we can. In fact, it's common practice in the AP area to uh, partition the work in a very strict manner, just you know, for separation of duties uh, reason. So indeed, uh, it's it's very common to have uh, you know the the person receiving the invoice and doing the extraction and doing the verification being different uh, than the person, say, approving the invoice or uh, executing the payment. So yes, uh, these are these are essentially uh, uh, distinct uh, tasks that are that are designed that way. The number of steps really varies the O on how you partition the work. Uh, for example, some people, depending on the enterprise and on the capabilities of your ERP system, uh, the, the workflow can sometimes be considered part of the ERP implementation and sometimes be part of the AP solution implementation. So it's difficult to answer with a, a generalized, you know, number of, of, of step. But uh, but those those that I mentioned are the the common ones. Okay, great. Um... Another question coming in, does Canon have a product that digitizes and parses paper or PDF documents? The answer to that is absolutely the uh, technology uh, that we use in all AP solution uh, is actually a, a Canon technology to extract information from PDF document. And it's actually not restricted to invoices or orders. It can be applied to a number of other documents in the firm. And uh, Paul uh, just mentioned, you know, warranty claims, for example, is a very typical example. But we have had the application in uh, many different fields uh, of using uh, this intelligent extraction to actually process information from document, either paper or electronic. All right, great. Uh, one more question coming in. Does Canon integrate solutions with existing ERP, ERP implementations, or is setting up an independent Canon solution more typical? In other words, do Canon solutions stand alone or integrate as a plug-in with uh, ERP systems? Yeah. So uh, the answer to that is that it really, really varies uh, depending on the customer need, but the more typical uh, AP implementation is actually closely integrated with the uh, ERP system. And 
I see the integration point at, at a very high level. Really, three, There are really three aspects, right? One of them is, of course, you extract information from an invoice, for example, to create a voucher transaction or an invoice transaction in ERP. And it could be a credit note or, or what have you. Uh, and that's one aspect. The other aspect, and it's very important, is that the quality of the extraction is actually helped by the information you already have in the ERP, which is essentially your master data. So if you receive an invoice from a so-called supplier that is nowhere to be found on your approved supplier list, you already have a problem, right? And you better flag it before it gets into your information system. Someone needs to take care of that because you received an invoice from someone who is not supposed to send you an invoice. And so the, these are just simple steps. And, and then the last point I want to make about ERP integration, very important as well, is that the information is logically linked. So if you receive an invoice, you create a transaction in ERP, but once that is done, the invoice image is linked to that invoice transaction in ERP forever. And if there are other documents that need to be linked, say a supply contract, for example, that's also linked to that information. And so the problem that John described very well of searching for information essentially goes away because all the information is linked to your transaction in ERP or in a unique fa fashion, in a sort of uh, information management type mode, I want to say. So these are the three important aspect of the ERP integration. And yes, we can provide all these. And we can also do standalone AP system, but this is not, I would say, not, not necessarily the solution that we favor in most cases. All right, and I have one real quick question uh, before uh, we run out of time, but uh, AP with automation implemented, was a three-way match still done? Okay. Yeah, that's a good. That's a very good, uh, very good question. So the three-way match uh, is the idea of matching the information on an invoice with the information on a PO, with essentially the receipt of the goods. And the answer is that this process is valid in many cases as long as you need it. Right. So. Uh, uh, depending on the on the particular industries, it may or may not be required, but it's very typical for the three-way match to still happen and to actually happen in many cases in the ERP system because that's where you have your receipt information, and so that that process still happens, but typically happens in the ERP system. Very good question. All right, All right great. Uh, well, yeah, and, and Tim, uh, I just wanted Tim, I just wanted to offer if anyone has any additional questions, um, you know, please feel free to contact uh, either myself, John, or uh, Bruno direct, directly. Uh, very, uh, very glad for the turnout and for the uh, for the questions uh, here uh, this afternoon. Great, thank you, and uh, thank you for a very uh, insightful presentation. Uh, in answer to somebody's question, yes, we will be sending a, a link for a webinar replay to you uh, next week. So uh, this brings our webinar to a close. And due to the AME International Conference that's going to be held uh, October 29th through November 1st in San Diego, our next scheduled webinar is going to be Thursday, November 29th, titled Neuroscience and Lean, Brain Rules You Need to Know for a Successful Lean Development. Please visit ame.org slash webinars for more information and to register. And please don't forget to fill out the survey that will be in your inbox. And thank you, everybody, for attending, and have a great day.